Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate Postran's being used to import an external file from an external system. Now, the external file will contain a list of payments or sales receipts matching invoices that are already in zero. And Postran's is going to match them off either by the invoice number or the external reference. So let's get on with the demonstration. Let's go to the Postran's toolbar and we're going to go to my examples button. To access all my examples, just going to scroll down. Of course, I could use the search um, box up there. But here we got uh, import and match sales receipts slash payments from a CSV file. Let's just double click on that. And let's just move that into the middle there. Okay, so what that's done is that's just opened a template and uh, We've got a training course online that explains how Postran's uh, templates are formed and how you can customize them all, but it basically has a series of tags in row 28 to denote what is in each column uh, mapping to zero. Up in the header here, we've got a few defaults set, which I'll explain in a moment. In um, zero, we've currently got obviously a list of outstanding invoices waiting for payment but what I'm going to do is and this is kind of how the program would be used we've possibly brought in already a load of invoices into zero and maybe this is a couple of days or a week or two later we get the payments in from the customer and we've maybe we're using some lovely bespoke software to do this someone's written a lovely nice front end and uh, so we want to match off the payments to all these invoices we've brought in so I've just put together this uh, template here, which is basically going to post a load of sales invoices to various contacts. Um, they're going to all be slightly out of overdue. Um, I'm going to override the standard um, invoice number in zero, which I can do with Postrans very easily, and put an external reference on, and they're all just simple values. So let's just post all those into zero as an example. And there we go, it posted them all in one big hit. So now we should have those in in zero. Let's just refresh. What do we call them? Oh yeah, example 789. You can see I've been doing a lot today. So um, we've got several different values in there. But okay, so we've got some, we've basically got some values in there. Very nice. So let's go back to the first um, template we opened and this has a file import enabled so when that's enabled and i'll probably show you how to enable that or change that at the end of the video um, when i press it it allows me to bring in a csv file matching a certain pattern or in a different place in the network or all of that sort of business i'm just going to double click on it and that's going to bring that file into the template so you can see here we've got a column and it says match and what that does is it matches by whatever set up here so we've got a thing called in cell search and I'm just going to press space and tab away and what that's going to do is it's going to show me all the options to match by so there's manual which is actually covered in a different video this is one of two videos or we can match against the oldest outstanding debt for an account, in which case we would need to specify the account number, which we haven't. Most people would use it, though, to really match against invoice number or their external reference for their external system. But in Xero, you can override the invoice number, so well, you could use the invoice number anyway. OK, so let's leave that at invoice number. Up here, I can say uh, allow matching of anything exact or anything less. So, you know, we might be invoicing, say, £100. We might have two payments of 50 So really, that allows us to, if I type a one in there, you see it'll say exact or anything less. Allows us to reject a little bit more validation. Also, we can say payment is reconciled, yes or no. So if I type a Y in there. That will then mark that as paid. I can set the overall receipt date, but I've actually overridden it down here. And presumably, if you're going to bring it in from an external file, you would have that anyway in your external system and the amount to allocate, plus the reference you want to see on your bank account. And also, Postrans allows us to add a note to each payment. So you may have another reference or some other useful piece of information. You can bring that in and pop it in the note. 
but of course we've just imported uh, this set of information here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to copy that reference there and I'm just going to put that in there and we're going to pretend that that came from the text file. Um, I'm only going to bring in a pound. I don't think there's any reason to allocate. Well, we could bring in the full amount. Let's, show it right here. let's, let's bring in the full amount. The last two will bring in the full amount. Okay, so let's press import on the post trans toolbar. Okay, so post trans is now reading the debtors list so it can match things off. It's found the first transaction in our list by, um, we've got invoice number matching. So it's found that matching invoice by example underscore invoice one. I'm just going to allocate one to that invoice. And um, really in this scenario, you probably would have turn this confirmation off. You can do that in system setup, which I might show in a little while. Or I can say, please don't ask again and just allocate them all off. And it'll chunder through the old uh, file there, uh, posting four transactions. So now if we go into um, into zero, and uh, I think if we double click actually on there, that'll pull it up. So we're looking for example, one to four, there's four, so now that should be oh yeah, we posted a hundred and twenty. Oh yeah, we posted a hundred and twenty against four. Oh, I think we put the wrong amounts against the wrong wrong lines there, but we part allocated then a hundred and twenty to that uh, invoice of one hundred and forty four, leaving twenty four pounds still outstanding. Fine. So let's drill down and have a look at the payment. So we've got the reference of ending in 125, which we have here. Uh, everything's hunky-dory, the reference is in there. And uh, if we go down here, we should be able to see our, our notes been added. So that shows you how we could bring in an external file and allocate it all off. Let's just press setup. I said I was gonna explain a few other things. Under switches, we've got the ability to turn off the confirmation window. And in file import tab, you can see here we can set um, import into column B. So what that's gonna do is when we press that file button and finally select a file, that will say, okay, paste basically that CSV file into column B at row 30 onwards. We can bring in single files or multiple files, and so basically it'll process everything in a directory. We can have it move them to a different directory. We can set a nice filter so we can bring in everything beginning with a certain name. Indeed, we can even run a batch file before it runs, so you could actually download it automatically from a separate place or FTP program. We can skip the first line if the CSV file actually contains names. We can set comma and text delimiters and all that sort of gubbins. So yeah, quite a little powerful utility there um, if you've got um, payments coming in from an external system.